cats. Check it out, my dudes. We got another box. I would have done a whole like backing in thing, but uh, it's cold outside. So let's get this unloaded and check it out. It's cold outside. Ah. So we're gonna do this in the house. It's busy. Check it out, guys. Oh my god, this is gonna be so sick. Look at that right there. <laughs> Holy crap, guys. Ah. Well, I was worried about how well packaged these would be and uh, how much they would like bounce around in the box. But let me tell you what, you do not have to worry because these things are freaking in here, man. Wow. Oh my God, I'm so excited, guys. Uh, so as you can see, these are all the parts laid out. There's a lot uh, for our up top overland roof rack. But yeah, so the gist of it, right? You have, this is the front wind fairing uh, for the rack. And I have the universal 40 inch light bar cut out on the top. So it's literally just a big open space. Um, and then when I do get my 40 inch light bar, I'll be able to mount it right in there and it should fit pretty much any bar that I want to do. And then of course we have our crossbars. Um, all of these ones are there for mounting equipment and all that sort of stuff on the roof. We have our uh, groove tech, the inner, that's what they call it, groove tech, and then the armor tech is the outer. So these two black uh, side supports right here are going to be for the inner portion of the rack. That's what we mount our bars to. The armor tech, which is the outer, I had specialty powder coated to match the uh, gray, the uh, cement is the specific color of my taco. Um, but man, it looks amazing. The powder coat is clean, like absolutely clean and gorgeous. Um, the quality is insane. As, as with every single build that I, or every single component I've added to the truck so far, the quality is just, it's its so good. Um, wow, look at that. Don't tell me that this is 100% like machined. This is crazy. Cool thing though about Uptop Overland is as you can see this like pattern that goes right here. So they have um, in this whole conglomeration of parts and pieces. <laughs> uh, Whenever you buy um, accessories and stuff to mount up on top of here, um, they have little little uh, nuts that thread into this uh, pattern that's going on here. And so they slide right in, um, which is pretty cool. And then obviously these are all of the hardware that's laid out um, in order to install each of these together and install them into the truck. And then we have uh, spacers as well to assist with um, aligning the rack onto the, the the roof of the truck as well and then of course it's really nice they include a little bit of thread locker um loctite whatever you want to call it this is vibratite wow um and it's highly recommended that you use that just to make sure that this uh doesn't come falling apart on you coming down the road um this is not complete uh, i got a little note here they're missing uh some of the parts but these are eventually gonna become grab handles that will go onto the side of my armor tech panel. I assume where those four bolts, uh, bolt holes are right there. Um, and that way I can crawl up onto the roof and hold on for dear life. Anyways, so here's the tools that we're gonna be needing for this uh, endeavor that we're gonna be doing today. So we have a uh, five millimeter Allen wrench. This is a 530 seconds Allen wrench, because why not? Uh, we have a 7 16 wrench. Uh, a half inch wrench, the instructions specifically call out two half inch wrenches, but I don't have two, so I have an all sixteenths, and hopefully that'll work. Um, or I can just use a socket, because I have that. And then a 13 millimeter. Uh, I think it's pretty wild that there is this much of a spread of uh, tool sizes. I figured it'd be relatively even. 
throughout. Another thing that it specifically calls out in uh, this little note that they left for me is that in each of these bags, they are built for um, like a generic uh, grouping of uh, the racks, right? They're built for every rack, uh, meaning some racks you're gonna have uh, the need for more or less of the hardware, which means that you may end up with leftover nuts and bolts at the end. Um, and they said, don't worry about that. It's uh, there for production um, speed, pretty much, so they can get these out to us. Uh, so another thing to note that's uh, called out in the instructions is that the moving weight, uh, meaning when you have this rack mounted on the, the roof of your truck and you're driving down the road, the moving weight is 175 pounds, um, but the static weight is 550 pounds. So if you're parked and you wanted to climb up on top of the roof of your truck and stand on the rack in order to like reach something or do something, then you're totally able to do that um, unless you weigh more than 550 pounds. I don't think you're overlanding if you weigh 550 pounds, but that's just me. I'll power to you if you are. So another thing that's called out is that while you're building the rack, um, putting extra effort into your wiring for like your light bar and um, like those cutouts right there on the armor tech are there for like rock lights effectively that run down the, there's four of them two on either side and the reason for that is because up top overland includes this opening here in the center of the crossbars right and so you can run your cables and your wires through the bar to either side in order to hide them within the actual bar itself now my 40 inch light bar has not been ordered because I haven't decided what I want to do and I haven't ordered any rock lights yet because I also haven't decided uh, what I want to do for those. So I'm not going to do that. Um, but just know that if you do have lights and all that sort of stuff already um, like as part of your install for today, uh, just to be wary and mindful of what you're going to be doing with your cables just so you know what you're doing. Our next step here, right, we have our uh, front feet so these are what are going to mount the rack itself to the roof of the truck and then we have our rear feet uh, this is the groove tech the inner portion of the rack and then we have um, pack number four here which is called feet to rack um, and all this is is a bolt washer and a nut flat washer to be specific i didn't see any lock washers in here so i don't think I, that we're going to need them hi Junie. so it also calls out your half inch wrench as well as your thread locker so the big idea for this step right is we have this armor tech making sure that these little like grommet things the screw portion of it is on the inside and then our feet are actually going to mount on the inside of this just like that all right and so we're going to have the holes of the feet if i can it's hard to do with one hand so the holes of the feet are going to line up just like that facing inwards so as i'm sure you can guess we're going to be doing we're going to be doing the nut, the washer, and then the bolt will be on the opposite side um, in order to thread it all together with a little bit of thread locker um, in order to hold it into place is what they recommend. I don't know if I want to do that just yet. I'm going to fully install everything and then I might go back through at the end, apply the thread locker um, and torque the bolts down because this step does specifically call out that these bolts are going to be torqued to 130 foot pounds, which is what they recommend. So I'm gonna make everything just tight to me, and then uh, once they are on the truck, I'll go ahead and apply the thread locker and tighten it all down with the torque specs. So for now, I'm just gonna put it all together. So for this next step, we're gonna be getting the load bars installed in between to Groove Tech. So for this one, we're gonna need our 7 16 wrench, the 5 30 seconds uh, Allen key, and then also both of these bags right here, we have the one titled first and last load bar, and then the one titled all other load bars. So the reason why these ones are different is once the first and last load bars are installed uh, up top overland figures, um, I assume that this is gonna be a thing, but uh, that we are going to, as overlanders, want to be able to adjust said bars with ha having to remove the uh, armor tech outer. So they made these hexes so that we can stick our wrench uh, right up in there to be able to adjust the location of these bars, right? Um, so the front bar, or each of the bars, are gonna be going into these like slots going along here, right? These horizontal ones, with the exception of the rear. Now, since my truck has a 
uh, factory shark fin antenna. I'm gonna be using, I believe it's these two uh, screw holes right here in order to screw the rear load bar in vertically instead of horizontally, um, which is totally fine. So the front one isn't hard. I mean, none of these are hard, right? You have the inside of this X pattern here on the crossbar is threaded. Um, so I'm running your screw with a uh, flat washer, then a lock washer, right? Lock washer being on the hex head side of the screw. We're just gonna kind of thread it in just a little bit. We'll get it, everything all set up and lined up, and then we'll tighten it all down. And once again, I think they recommend thread locker. Um, this step, honestly, you could just kind of send it for your thread locker but uh, I'm probably just gonna wait until I have everything just kind of set into place and then I'll worry about that. Um, for the rear one, this little square right here is perfect for if you have any cables or wires or anything like that that you're running. So I'm probably gonna use this screw hole and then the main slot if you were to run the bar horizontally, um, I think in order to run that, because then that center hole right there lines up perfectly with that screw hole. So I realize you guys may not have been able to see any of that, um, but here's what I'm talking about. So I'm using the top bolt of these two, or the top hole of these two, along with the main track, uh, if you were to run the bar horizontally. That way, this little square right here in the center um, is open if I wanna run cables and stuff through it. I'm gonna use this pack right here uh, same concept we have. These are just flat washers. So it's gonna be just the screw and a flat washer. And we're gonna thread them in to each of the bars setting up inside of these little sideways slots right here. Well, I got each of these all lined up and set up. They're not like centered or anything. Um, and they're not even finger tight. But uh, I wanna be able to get the other side mounted. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Um, and then we'll just kinda like snug up each of these bolts. Um, nothing crazy. There are torque specs. I'm not gonna worry about talking it yet. I'm already talking about that. So, let me do the other side. So the spec for these guys, uh, I mentioned the torque spec is gonna be seven zero inch pounds, not foot pounds, inch pounds. Um, but like I said, I'm not doing any of that until later. Uh, for now, you can just kind of make these finger tight um, because I'm gonna be moving some stuff around once everything's all together and set up. So I just wanna make sure it doesn't fall apart on me when I put it on, the, carry it out to put it on the truck. Next, I am gonna be doing the wind fairing or the uh, fairing and light bar cutout. We're gonna be using a 13 millimeter and our five millimeter, right? The 13 millimeter wrench for your hex and your five millimeter for the end of your bolt. Uh, so super simple, right? You're gonna run the bolt through your roof tech, through the fairing support, and then throw the nut on the end and uh, tighten it down. Why are you hitting your sister? You leave her alone. She doesn't deserve it. All right, I think it's a pretty good time to kind of tighten some stuff up now. Um, so this front bar, I don't really know exactly where it's gonna end up resting uh, for its final resting place. So for now, I'm just gonna set it right in the center and then we're gonna go ahead and tighten her down. So I centered all of the crossbars um, and then got them tightened down. They're not uh, full tightness yet, but it's just sturdy, uh, so enough to not be floppy. Next is attaching the Armor Tech to the Groove Tech. So we have our spacer kit, we got our front spacers, we got our rear spacers, and of course we have um, these as well. We have this kit right here, which is uh, once again our little five millimeter hex uh, to go onto the end, and then we have these spacers, right? So the Armor Tech is gonna align right along 
um, the edge here and pretty much these are going to get threaded into these little hole inserts right here. So uh, yeah, let's take a peek. So here's how it's going to look. Um, obviously these holes are still open, one, two, three, and four, but these are gonna uh, be filled with these spacers and bolts once we install the grab handles onto the side. This is how it's gonna look, um, chilling on the side. Obviously we have our spot to be able to put our pods whenever we get them in here. Um, but super easy install on the side because we have our bolt with our five millimeter and then there's a spacer right down there in the center um, and it lines up very very well so i'm going to go ahead and get this done on the other side and then from there we move on to prepping the truck so i'm actually going to continue on with the handle install portion that i have so i don't have the the handles that like stick out of here right but i can get these plates added on um, so we have this kit right here for the grab handles, which have a bunch of spacers and then our bolts with five millimeter um, hex ends, right? So basically we're going to run the bolt through the handle attachment, right? And then we're going to have a spacer, uh, the armor tech, another spacer between that and then the groove tech that it actually screws into. So I'll show you how that's going to look. So here we are, right? So we have our, our bolt, which we're going to run through our handle. Uh, eventually, when we have the actual handles, we'll attach them in here, but we're just gonna do this for now. And then we have a spacer, and then we're gonna run it through the armor tech, and then we have a second spacer that we're gonna have, whoop, if we don't drop it, that we're gonna have set right, oh my gosh. Just like that. And then that spacer is going to, uh, well, keep the space. We're gonna do the same on the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that for all four grab handle locations. And yeah. I don't know if you guys can tell all that well just because of how bad the lighting is, but the Armor Tech uh, outer really does match the color of the truck like well. I'm very excited. When you buy the Uptop Overland uh, rack, it gives you the option of, of color matching either the outer or the inner. Um, and I'm really happy that I went with the outer. I figured that it would look better in terms of the car because the inner is more of an accent than the outer. Um, and honestly, I'm really happy with that decision because I think it's gonna fit super well um, because of the black accents on the truck. I'm very excited. So the next step, we gotta get up on top of the truck here. And if you have a plastic trim removal tool or whatever the heck, um, we're gonna be getting in, this is the back part of the truck, right? And this little, little groove, we should be able to pop it up. If I can get it. A little close up here so we have this piece is being held down by this piece and this piece has just that little clip right there that pops in right there um, so we're gonna peel up this one we're gonna be super gentle because there's a, a strip of metal that runs down the length of this in order to help it form to the car um, but right around the center here is um, some like foam tape that's holding it all in place so we're gonna gently peel this up uh, while attempting not to bend this piece at all. I've never done this before, so we can look. There it is. So you can see that strip that I was talking about. Uh, so from this point, we're just gonna kinda clean up a little bit because uh, it gets dirty up here from years of use. Hi, Salem. Uh, so I'm gonna get this cleaned up get all this foam off and then we're going to be attaching see this like tape cover that's going on right here so there's two screw holes like kind of indent where my finger is so you can see them that is where the rack is going to be mounting to the front so we have two in the back and then we have two in the front the center one is not going to be used so don't bother touching that at all because we don't want to be adding holes to the roof of the truck but uh yeah so i'm going to clean up the track i'm going to get this gunk scraped out and then we're gonna get these holes enlarged and then I'll show you what we're doing next. Ow! Ow! 
Can you get off my back, please? Thank you. Oh. That was that was straight claws. Ow. Sweet, so that's done on both the back and the front. Uh, we have those holes opened up, remember, we're not doing the center one, just the front and the back. Uh, now, we can take some painter's tape and we can mark out where these holes are um, because we're gonna be placing this track back into place and then using the tape as a uh, location, pretty much, to tell us where these holes are so that we can cut a hole through the rubber. And that way we can maintain this seal up here um, and still be able to run our screws through. So basically the idea here, uh, split my tape up, right, is I'm going to align, and you can do this however you want, but I'm going to align my tape with the back edge right there of the, uh, the hole. And that way, when we put the strip back in, I'll be able to mark out exactly where that hole is relatively. And I'm going to throw a little, come on, a little arrow, just kind of directing where that hole is. So I'm going to do that same both front and back hole. I'm going to do this on the front, um, but just so that I can kind of speed this along, basically we're going to stick this back into the track, and then we are going to be using a Sharpie, we're using a pen and marking off along that line, right, the edge right here of the tape, because that's where the edge of our hole is. Um, you could even go just a little bit further in and then mark center. And that is where we're going to be drilling our, uh, our hole to go through right there. So we got two marks and we're going to be drilling our holes through that. So we got it all marked up in the back as well as the front. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat this on the driver's side of the car. Um, and then we're gonna be pulling these strips off and drilling some holes. So I have it repeated on the driver's side as well. I don't know how well you can see that. But uh, next step is to take this gasket back out and we're gonna drill the hole. Okay, so now we got these off of the truck. It's the next day, so I am now outside and it's warm. Um, but yeah, we got these off of the truck and you'll see my uh, the marks that I have made for my holes to be punched uh, right here for each of those. Uh, we're going to be using a hole punch. This is a, a three quarter or 19 millimeter punch. And the reason we're using this, so the reason we're using the 19 millimeter is because it's going to be just enough for the spacer to fit. Now, uh, this one is if I would have, if I were to push it, they would fit pretty darn snug inside the center, as you can see, um, of this punch. So it should be a pretty clean fit. And then those spacers are going to allow us to run the screws uh, sealed through there. So we're gonna be using our punch. We're gonna be placing it on here and we're gonna be smacking it with a hammer and uh, hoping it comes out okay. If you remember guys, there is a metal strip um, on the inside of this thing, which is why we have to use the punch. Um, instead of just a regular drill. I mean, I guess you could use a drill, but I don't know. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock these holes out and then I'll show you what we're looking at. So there's the holes laid out. And I'll show you how these fit very, very, very snugly, which is awesome. Works great. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, other side knocked out and then we'll get these thrown back on the truck. So when you're putting these back on the truck, just make sure that you don't forget to take your tape off or you're going to be taking off the, the strips again. You can put your tape on. Uh, but it lines up super easy. The front just pops into place. And the rest of it, you just kind of press seal. And as you can see, the holes line up quite perfectly. So once again, press seal. Work our way to the back here. Go ahead and remove our tape.
and then we lift up on this back portion make sure this is all pushed down into place there and then this just pops right back on and once again there's those holes lining up pretty pretty darn good so next we can get the rack lifted and placed uh, onto the roof of the truck which is a little bit difficult if you're only one person uh, so definitely do this with two people. Uh, don't be like me. Uh, I'm gonna do it with one person, aka me, and hopefully it'll be fine. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do this first. So we have a bag labeled front spacers and a bag labeled rear. The front ones are slightly taller than the rear, um, and we're just gonna kind of pop them down in here. Now, one thing that you may want to do um, is get a little bit of like silicone um, or something like that, and just kind of squeeze it on into here so that once you thread it in um, you don't have to worry about water or anything like that leaking down into the thread so i might do that and yeah so we're going to get these rested in each of the holes a little bit of silicone squeezed in them and then we'll start lifting the rack up so like i said it is recommended to use silicone i don't have any so i'm going to use white lithium grease uh, which should accomplish the same thing no problemo So I've already broken into it, but we're going to be getting into the bag labeled Rack 2 Roof. And in the bag you have these bolts, your lock washer, and your flat washer, and you get an extra one. And this is going to be using your 5mm hex or allen key. So, I'm going to kind of wiggle this guy around until I have screw holes that just line up. And then we'll get the screws. Thrown in. And one thing that Uptop Overland does talk about in the instructions is when you're getting these screwed in, if you encounter any resistance, not to push past it, which is kind of self-explanatory when it comes to threading screws. But the, uh, the threads on the roof of your car are aluminum, and these screws are stainless steel. Uh, so you can kind of understand why you don't want to push past it, because you will absolutely ruin your threads. So if it doesn't thread, take back a screw back out, um, get in there and clean it or retap the hole or something. And then go ahead and finish off what you started. And now that the rack is up here, we can tighten everything down, starting in the front. As you guys recall, we didn't tighten, we didn't tighten these two nuts right here because this foot slides in order to uh, mesh itself to the roof of the truck. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten down this front one first, just so that it is in line with the body of the truck. So I got the front tightened down and then I tightened down the rear. And the last thing here is to come back with our 13 millimeter uh, wrenches and tighten down these on all four of the feet. So let me do that. All right, it's all tightened down and it's up here super, super solid. Uh, so once again, I think it's 170 inch pounds for the uh, connector bolts right here on the side. I realize that I don't really care to uh, torque them down beyond um, my ridiculously hand tight. Um, in addition to that, I didn't add any thread locker, as you guys saw. Uh, you probably want to add some thread locker onto some of these bolts, like for your armor tech or for your rails, just to make sure that they don't come unscrewed. Because um, when you have two different types of, of metal, like I think these are the stainless steel bolts still, and then of course you have your aluminum bars, uh, they like to back out of each other because they're not the same type of metal. I don't know, science. Uh, so the thread locker will prevent that. Eventually I'll go through and I'll throw a thread locker on here, but uh, not today. Uh, also, I'll see you guys in like two seconds, but it's going to be a couple weeks for me because we need to get these handles installed. 
So it's been like two weeks for me, but like two seconds for you. Uh, they're here. Bam, look at that. So these are the grab handles. I'll get them pulled out and uh, we'll start getting them all roped in. But first we gotta go back out to the truck. Uh, pieces right here with these tiny holes are what we're gonna be hooking a, the actual handles to. So I have that five millimeter hex and these are only just gonna unscrew. They're just gonna unscrew like this. They are threaded on the other side um, as you guys already saw. So we'll just go ahead and unscrew them all are in, all four. And we'll get them on that. I just can't drop, not drop stuff. Well, there we have it. Everything sitting out on the table, as you can see. These grab handles are sick, dude. They look really clean. Uh, and to be honest with you, I don't know what GPCA stands for. So that's interesting. If you know, let me know in the comments. Uh, <laughs> but these, uh, I have this like, it's kind of like a grippy texture to the metal almost, you know, which is really neat. Uh, I like it. Anyways, yeah, so, I don't know why I had those upside down. These handles, um, we're gonna be using the paracord to loop uh, and tie these handles onto these sort of handles, right? And then these are just, uh, it's a safety wire, so you're gonna be running it through, or around like, and through one of the holes on here, in order to ensure that if that paracord slips loose, the safety wire will keep it from completely falling off while you're holding onto it. Um, so all we're going to need for this is a pair of scissors or a knife or something to cut the paracord after we've tied it, a lighter in order to melt the end of it to keep it from fraying, and then also um, some sort of a crimping tool or, you know, some pliers or whatever so that you can crimp this guy. Up top did give us <clears throat> four individual strands of the paracord, um, so we'll start out just by making some sort of a, a simple knot. The big goal of this knot is that <clears throat> when it's pressed up against this hole right here, the smaller one, right? Hi, cat. Because the bigger one is what the screw's gonna thread through, and the smaller one is what the paracord's gonna run through. And you just wanna make sure the knot's big enough that it's not gonna fall through that hole. Um, so, we have that knot. We're gonna run through this first hole right here and pull this completely through, right? And you can see that that's stuck. It's not going anywhere. Uh, now, this is gonna be the back of the handle so that's going to be in towards the rack in towards the truck and then pretty much you're going to take your handle and you're going to do three loops around the top portion of the handle itself uh, either direction just whatever you do do it for all of them right so that it looks uniform um, so we'll just kind of do three three laps right here it's one it's two that's three Right, and if you want to do an extra one, that's totally cool too. It's, it's just up to you. But three is three is perfectly fine. And then we're gonna run this end back through the second of the small holes, right? And that will create our anchor point for the left side of the handle, just like that. And then we're gonna go to the back. We're gonna flip the handle over. Uh, we're gonna run all the way down the length to the second to last of the small holes, right? And we're gonna repeat the process going backwards on this side. Now, since you can see my string comes out from underneath the handle here, so we're gonna start by going underneath the handle on the other side. And then we're gonna triple wrap again. So one, two, hold up. <laughs> it's a little, a little tight. Three, right? So we got three strands going around. This one on top is gonna go back once again. And these strings just kind of get longer as you uh, tighten and pull and everything like that. But we'll take care of that at the end. But feed it right back through like that. So next we're gonna pop into this bag right here. And we did get nine of these actually. So we, we have enough to do two per handle, which I think is what I'm gonna wanna do. So I'm gonna pull out two of these cables and we're gonna take the uh, cable, we're gonna bend it in like a U form right here, right? And basically what we're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you on another one. So this is gonna wrap around the actual handle itself and then it's gonna go back through a singular hole just like that. So I'm gonna use the third hole in on both sides, right? And that's gonna loop around the handle. We'll pull it tight and uh, and then we have this piece right here, which has the little little holes in it, and we'll be able to align and slide this little braided cable through, just like that. 
and then we'll make it tight and then we'll crimp. So that's how that's gonna look right there. So we have the cable running through into that third small hole and then sitting around the crimp uh, or crimping metal. And then we have our <coughs> crimping tool, which I believe the yellow is gonna be perfectly fine to be able to crimp. But uh, basically with your crimping tool, right, you're gonna be setting it Ooh. over top the crimp, pull it down and then squeeze it until it is fully tight. So I'll show you that. So there we have that first side in there and it's all crimped, which is good. Um, once again, this doesn't, like I said, need to be tight because the paracord is really what's holding it in. That's just there as a safety wire, right? Uh, then we can just grab our old wire cutters and pop these off. Well, I popped it off and it flew off somewhere, so uh, I'm sure we'll find it someday. But there you have it. So that is fully installed. Obviously, these are a little bit pokey, so don't stab yourself. We're gonna repeat the same thing on the other side since we have enough of these little wires. Now that both of those are on and crimped just like that, now we can tighten everything up. So just like we did before with the whole shoelace thing, we're just kind of pulling, pulling the, the, uh, the paracord through, the 550 cord uh, as tight as we can make it with our fingers. Just like that. Sweet, look at that, all good. So now we can snip off the end, both sides. And you grab yourself a lighter and very safely melt the end down. There you have it. Grab handle is built. So all that's left to do is finish the, the other four, or sorry, the other three, and then we'll get this installed back on the truck. All four are done and looking real good. Uh, yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and get these out and install them on the truck and see what they look like. Your handle, your five millimeter bolt is gonna thread through the handle just like that, right? And then we have um, our spacer. As I drop everything. So we have our spacer, and that's gonna go through the uh, armor tech outer, and then we have our spacer on the inside, um, and then it'll screw into the threaded portion within the groove tech inner. Now I am gonna use the uh, provided red Loctite in order to put these on. So uh, yeah, and then I'm just gonna torque them down hand torque or hand tight, or as tight as I can get them with an Allen key. Well, there you have it. They are all installed, good and tight. This is awesome. They look really good too. And they're sturdy. I like it a lot. So you'll be able to, I don't really know what the weight limit on this would be. Um, so each one is able to take like 500 pounds, 550 pounds, I think. Or maybe it's for the rating for the whole thing. Either way, less than what I weigh. So I can put my whole weight on this thing and literally shake the truck and not have to worry about it. Not to mention that we have those, um, the cables to help, like, I don't know, just in case the cord breaks or gets frayed or something like that or comes undone because we didn't melt it good enough, um, then that's there to stop you from falling off. But yeah, it looks sick and uh, I like it a lot. Well, oh, there you have it, guys. Let me not be facing directly into the sun. Whew, it's so bright. Uh, yeah, that is the Up Top Overland uh, roof rack, which is incredible. It looks great, and I am very excited to have it as an addition on my truck. So now I can start mounting things on the roof. Um, and then of course the handles are just super convenient when you're getting up onto the truck to be able to do stuff up top, because uh, you've got a handle. I hope you have learned something or had any question answered on how any portion of this install may go. Um, and for the most part, these installs are relatively universal across other roof racks too. Um, so when it comes to like prepping the truck and all that sort of stuff, all those steps are gonna be the same. So even if you don't have an up top uh, roof rack, it's still gonna be pretty, pretty dang similar. Uh, yeah, anyways, uh, I'll do a little, little montage for you so that you can see um, I guess for the people that skip to the end so that they can see just what it looks like on the truck. Um, here you go.
so yeah if you guys have enjoyed or you at all found this helpful uh please do me a flavor drop a like and hit that subscribe button and uh come back for my next upgrade because it doesn't stop <laughs> with every new one that i get uh there's another one that i'm wanting so uh yeah there's plenty to do but project's coming along real nice um i'm finally at a point where i can take sasha out and uh really kind of do whatever and go anywhere and be totally comfortable everything after this is relatively cosmetic and for like way of life type of stuff um, outside of the the suspension lift that i want to do and the larger tires because those are actually going to do um, more performance wise for off-road however not necessary because uh, i'm not like crazy rock crawling this thing because it can't do that anyways uh yeah catch you guys next go around midnight sign out